Hi, morning everyone. My name is uh, Cheong Kim from KAIST. So today I'd like to talk about the matrix auction and its effect on the shape uh, stability of 3D printed concrete. So here's the outline we have on today. It starts with the introduction and talking about the matrix auction, matrix auction and, and others. So for the introduction, I think this is now very old fashioned pictures, right? So we have seen the layer extrusions from i 2 band and contour crafting, USC, binder jetting, formwork manufacturing, and sometimes we have seen these smart dynamic castings in, in the world. So here I want to just focus on the layer depositions. Layer deposition, as you know, that is the most common uh, method for 3D printed concrete. Oh, yeah, still we have some problems to be solved. The first one is size equipment is quite large, so it is very proportional to the structural scale. So, and the second is about uh, some decreasing strength between layers. We have to solve that problem too. And another one is about the difficulties that is related to the second problem, the difficulties in placing the rebound assembly. Right? So beyond this problem, but still the layer deposition is, I think that is one of the po most possible way for 3D printing. And here on today, I want to just focus on the shape stability. So when we place the concrete layer by layer, the shape should be sustained as we design. Right? So this shape stability, of course, depends on the price properties of 3D concrete. 3D concrete. And we can think that two types of failure mode. The one is, uh, for layer flow out, the yield stress is quite low and it cannot sustain its flow out. And the second is about the self-buckling. So if we add up layers and layers, then we will see we will get some eccentricity on the, uh, the gravity load and this eccentricity eventually gives us the elastic buckling. So that is related to our elastic modulus of our material. So on the right figure, you can see both yield stress and elastic modulus increase over time. So at first, layer flow out we can easily see on our material because the external load is a little bit higher than the yield stress, then we can see the squeezing flow out. So, and after time passed, sometimes we will see the self-buckling because the development of yield stress over time is quite slow compared to the, the, the yield stress increase over time. So, both failure mode we can easily see, uh, in, in our layers of concrete. And here I want to say that the important thing is uh, the yield stress and elastic modulus increase over time, right? So that, that's the reason why we can continue our 3D printings. The structural buildup over time is usually linked to the thixotropy. The thixotropy is defined like this. When you apply the high sharing on your material, on your mix, then the viscosity is decreasing. The resistance to the external shear is decreasing that is usually called the breakdown process. But if you apply a very slow rate of sharing, then you can see your viscosity of mix is increasing. So it is called rebuilding or structural buildup over time. Uh, to evaluate the thixotropy, we usually adopt the, uh, the technique to see the relaxation process, breakdown process, when you apply the high sharing over here, then the viscosity dramatically decreases within a short time, just one second. But if you apply the low shear rate at 0.1 second, then the viscosity decrease is moderate. So our structure build up as well as the relaxation depends on the external, the intensity of the sharing. And your 3D print concrete is at rest after, right after deposition. Then, of course, it's yield stress and elastic modulus dramatically increase. That's what you expect on our material. And the thixotropy, the reason why we, the, we have the thixotropy of the material is explained by the flocculation. 
right? So cement particle in the water, they, they get together. That is called flocculation. So reversible, uh, particle interaction is called flocculation. Again, if you have applied a uh, high sharing, this flocculation break down. So we will see the deflocculation. The particles are dispersed. But if you, uh, if you take your material and rest, again, the cement particles get together. That's called flocculation. When you apply the high sharing here, when you put the high sharing on the, on the right uh, blue colors on the right figure, then we will see the large size of flux. So with this large size of flux, we can get the high viscosity. And if you apply the very high sharing, the flux size is decreased from 160 micron to the 120 micron. So this data was uh, measured with our proposed uh, techniques. It is called the laser spectroscopy. Over there on the right, on the left figure, the laser sensors was connected to the rail meter system. So on the top side with the torque bar, we measure the sharing, uh, we apply the sharing, and also we are measuring the viscosity. And with the bottom side, the ray, with the laser flow, we just catch the flux size, uh, together with the measurement of the viscosity. So, this is the correlation between the dextropy, dextropy and flocculation. When you apply the high, uh, low sharing on the left side, then your flux size increase. It means that the particle size distribution moves to the right. But if you apply the high sharing on the bottom figure, then of course our flux size is decreased. The distribution gets smaller and smaller and moving to the left side. And together, uh, the measurement together with this flux size, is given here on the right side. So if you apply the low sharing, one less per second, the mean size is over the 150 micron and the viscosity is high. And applying the high sharing, 150, viscosity is decreasing and also the flux size decreases. So there's a, there is a correlation between flocculation and dixotropy. And this dixotropical response, dixotropical structure build up is contributing the the strength increase over time of our material. So, uh, one more step to see the the exact amount of structural buildup on our 3D printed material. So this is called the squeeze flow test. So we think that if there is a layer deposition, the material is placed at rest, and this material is subjected to the loading with its self weight. So on the right figure, the sample is just cast it like 3D printing and place it in the, in the jig and apply the loading. And we had a laser sensor on the, on the side. So with this laser sensor, we can catch the radial strain in a company with a vertical strain, right? So when it is off the state on the left side, it looks very good. It, it shows a good shape as we expect. And if you increase the loading, compressive loading, of course, it shows some bulging in the middle pictures. And of course, and also if you look inside, to, not inside, if you look uh, carefully the surface, you can find some cracks and pores. Now it shows some fail, failure. And at the last stage, when it has been failed, so we can see the large fracture on the surface. So we never use that kind of material when the, the yield stress is quite low. So, and this is the figure for the result. Uh, first of all, when you see the alphabet E, that's uh, Young's modulus, so that is a curve developed by compressive stress and vertical strain. And also, together with the vertical strain, we got the radial strain, so we can develop the stress strain curve using the radial strain, that is the right curve. So on both curves, we can catch the yield stress very carefully. And here, I want to say that the yield stress we catch is about 25 kilopascal. So that is a kilopascal level. In the experiment we have seen in, in the previous slide, the yield stress with the setup of the reality is around 100 pascal, lower than 1 kilopascal. So I think there is a large gap when we have measurement 
by the dixotropic, dixotropic response. And here in the shape stability, our material shows very large yield stress. So well, today I want to just uh, report some additional contribution to our yield stress. On the, left, on the right figure, you can see the earth is uh, dried up and cracked because of the drought. Right? So if there is a water inside, of course we cannot see this cracked surface. But uh, water inside evaporated and no more water, the soil gets unsaturated. In unsaturated surface, we will see this cracked surface. So this cracked surface is called uh, fa uh, the failure of the ores due to the matrix suction. So in order to explain the matrix suction, first I want to say about the, some capillary tube. So because of the surface tension of the water, uh, we can get the capillary rise when uh, the water is a little bit short in our material. This short of, short of water gave us uh, some negative pore pressure inside. This negative pressure uh, gives some attraction between two particles. So the particles get attracted and attracted some hair. But in some group of uh, the attracted particle, they uh, subjected a very huge tangential stress. This tangential stress finally makes the cracks. So matrix suction is very huge. I mean, compared to the dixotropic yield stress, it is very huge uh, amount. So we need to see the matrix suction more. So in soil mechanics, they are characterizing this matrix suction using the soil water characterization curve. That is the relationship between the matrix suction and volumetric water content. So the, the basic idea is very simple. When your material is fully saturated, so the degree of saturation is 100%, like our just intact mix, then the matrix suction obviously zero. So if you go to the left side, the matrix suction goes to zero. But volumetric water content, that is the volumetric water content. It means that in total volume, how much water we have by volume. So in the clay soil on the first curve, the volumetric water content can go up to the 90%. That is fully saturated situation. In at the fully saturated clay, there is no matrix suction, almost zero. But if you dry, dry it, a little bit, then the soil, the clay soil, gets unsaturated, and then matrix suction is increasing and increasing. This unsaturated soil, uh, con the concept of unsaturated soil is explaining the strength development of our 3D printed concrete. So, now I want to see more details of our matrix suction of cement binder. So this is uh, one setup to measure the uh, matrix suction of our cement paste. So that is very small equipment. On the sample place, we can just put the cement paste, very thin cement, plate, cement paste. And using this chilled meter hygrometer, we can catch the vapor pressure of when the material is placed in a small chamber. That small chamber is uh, pointed out here by point B here. And of course, the sample has a certain temperature, at a certain temperature. At a certain temperature, we can calculate the vapor pressure of this uh, corresponding uh, vapor pressure P, that is the pressure at dew point. And also, if you supply some very small amount of vapor, uh, that's going to be water vapor inside of the chamber. It, the wet vapor pressure goes up, goes up, and certainly the water vapor uh, becomes the uh, real water in front of the chilled meter. So this P naught can be detected with this small setup. So here, this is the sample we put in the small chamber on saturated state. So we catch the vapor pressure at unsaturated and applying, I mean, supplying some vapor inside, the samples get saturated and taking the vapor pressure at the saturated, we catch, uh, we get the record of the P naught. The difference between P naught and P is the relative humidity. 
So the use of Kelvin equation converts this relative humidity, the vapor pressure, to our metric suction. So this is the one example of my measurement. First, I tried to measure the metric suction of the cement, fly ash, and limestone powder. That is the usual material we can easily achieve in our field. So cement here, it is located in the top curve. And the x-axis is worked by the ratio. So first of all, if you make the cement paste and compare its metric suction with the metric suction of the fly ash and limestone powder. We all know that the cement particles have a very high intensity of the cement uh, flux ratio. So in that case, we have a high metric suction. The level is about 200 kilopascal when you produce your cement paste around 0.5 volt by inverter cement ratio. So it is quite high contribution to the yield stress. And also, if you decrease the volt to cement bind ratio, then metric suction is shows the increasing trend. Right? So if you produce your concrete at a lower bind rate, lower water to cement ratio, yeah, of course, we can see, sometimes we can see the some cracked surface of your material. So that cracked surface is due to this metric suction. And if you add some poor, uh, uh, PCE, polycarboxylate ether, in the material, so we will get some homogenized mix. Homogenized mix sometimes uh, make our particles releasing some free water outside. So in that case, our uh, metric suction is slightly uh, decreasing compared to the, the, the intact cement paste. So another investigation of the metric suction is on the correlation with the yield stress. Yes, we measure the yield stress of a sample with the setup I have shown and before the, the squeeze flow test and uh, take the metric suction measurement and show the correlation. Here, the x-axis is the metric suction. Again, if you decrease the word to cement ratio, a higher metric suction is developed. So your curve is going to right here. And together with the increase of metric suction, obviously there is an increase of yield stress. So this correlating trend was found in both neat cement paste as well as superplastic paste. That was good. And both, uh, both PCE, superplasticizer, and some nanoclay addition increase the yield stress at the same level of the metric suction. So again, when you apply the polycarboxylate to your sample, we can get some, some uh, fluid, very uh, uh, high flow cement mix at this time. In this high flow cement mix, metric suction gets smaller and smaller. That is related to the yield stress decrease. But at the same metric suction, it means that at the same water by duration, of course, the, the yield stress Decrease, rather yield stress decrease, we can get the similar level of yield stress. And also when you apply the nanoclay, as you know that the microstructure, the shape of the nanoclay is a needle shape. So on this needle shape, yes, in, in, in that case, this needle shape, we can expect some, there is some frictional anchors between particle. So at the same level of the metric suction, the, this, this frictional anchor can increase uh, the yield stress of the material, I think. So another one is the effect of the additives on the metric suction. So first of all, here we compare the several additives. That's going to be the NC, nanoclay. NS is a nanosilica and fly ash. SAP is a super absorbent polymers. At a constant word bind ratio, uh, first of all, when you add the polycarboxylate, the superplasticizer, so it was impossible to catch the, the metric suction because it, it shows very uh, low yield stress, it flows, just flow out. Unfortunately, we cannot get the data. But if you add a nanoclay, again, the yield stress is quite increasing. Here, that is uh, located over here. So compared to the neat cement paste, metric suction, uh, the yield stress is quite increasing. But the metric suction is also slightly decreased. Yes, this needle shape one just touch the pore waters between particles and through this needle shape, the water can release, can be released out a little bit. So that 
is related to the matrix suction decrease, decrease in the matrix suction. And in the case of super absorbent polymer, as we expect it absorb large amount of free water in the mix, so it means that the matrix suction can decrease, can increase, sorry. So here, SAP is located over here. The matrix suction is increased. But this polymer is absorbing the water large up to the large amount. So in that case, we can get some swelling of the polymer itself. So it is very hard to control. So the contribution of the matrix suction to the yield stress and elastic modulus can be explained with this generalized Hooke's law. So as you all know that the general Hooke's law is providing these two components. The first one is the radial stress and radial strain is explained by the radial stress increase and also the Poisson's effect to the uh, radial direction of the uh, stress. So in our um, squeeze flow test, yeah, of course there is uh, just compressible loading, sigma z, and we can get the radial strain, the expansion, right? So that is, uh, they are in the opposite direction. Here we have to add the matrix suction component, psi m, that is the matrix suction. So when we discuss the effect of matrix suction, first we can think the eigen strain. Even though we don't have any compressible loading, due to the matrix suction, our material is a little bit shrinked. So that is called eigen strain. The strain at the, at, uh, with the, uh, no, no external stress. So with this eigen strain, you can, con uh, you can explain the elastic modulus is increasing due to the matrix section. And also the matrix section usually take place the, on the outer surface of our sample because outer surface of our sample is very easy to be evaporated or evaporated to the outfield. So in that case, the matrix suction is quite large on the surface of your sample. So this matrix suction it becomes uh, some confining stress on the material. The, if there is confinement on the sample, then your strength is increasing. So matrix suction contributed to the both yield stress and the elastic modulus increases. And here, another measurement I want to show today is about the matrix suction of the fine aggregates. So there is another setup in soil mechanics to catch the matrix suction of a uh, sand particle. So this is a sample we make with the sand particles only. There's no cement inside. So we are measuring the matrix suction. And here we just compare the matrix suction of our cement paste, cement mortar, and sometimes we replace the sil uh, sand by silica sand. So matrix suction we, for the cement paste is just 139 kilopascal. Mm -hmm. And as sand inside, the matrix suction increased 141 and 147, 46. But the increase is quite small compared to the matrix suction of the cement paste itself. So matrix suction of the binder is quite large, but the matrix suction of final aggregate is very small, or smaller than 10%. And this matrix suction may be uh, I think it is very related to the excess paste layer because if you see the aggregates in the mix, this aggregate can absorb and absorb some water molecules on the aggregate. So around the aggregate, to the water to bind ratio is a little bit decreasing. So at the place where we have the small water to bind ratio compared to the other area, then matrix suction is quite a little bit increasing. So the water molecule was attached to the aggregate surface due to the matrix suction. So this matrix suction is uh, explained by this curve. So when you add the polycarbonate, the excess space layer is smaller and smaller. And in that case, the matrix suction, when you add some dust, uh, the polycarbonate in the sample, the matrix suction is increasing. That is uh, correlated again. So the last page on today is here. So conclusion is that matrix suction I want to show on today, that is the matrix suction. And the matrix suction is an additional contribution to the shape stability of the 3D concrete printing. Yes, according to the theory of elasticity, Hooke's law, the, the matrix suction can explain the confining stress on the sample as well as the eigen strain of the sample. 
So the first one is related to the enhancement of yield stress, and the second is related to the elastic modulus increase, the increase in elastic modulus. And lastly, I was also comparing it with the sand particle final grades. The metrization of the final grades is quite small, is it was uh, less than 10%. So we have to focus on the metrization and dictatorial response of the cement binder to explain the shape stability of 3D, 3D concrete, 3D printed concrete. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you.